don't. Not often are you lucky enough to have, you know, your character already written about. So I definitely read the books and got a good sense of, of who I felt Emily was. All four of the girls brought the books to Vancouver where we filmed the pilot. And I think when we were filming the pilot, I was already through the fourth book. And it was one of the coolest experiences in the world because I would have these whole chapters of Spencer. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is how my character thinks. This is what's going on in her life. This is what her room looks like. I mean, I got really carried away. You know, you pick up on details of their life that aren't written in the scripts because there's a lot of events that happen in the books that we can't get to in the show. And so there's definitely some differences between all the characters in the book and what we're doing with the series. But it was sort of fun to know that the books were out there and we could find out maybe a little bit of what was to come. We actually get surprised kind of every time we read a script because we don't know exactly what's gonna happen. We kind of know the beginning and end result, but the in-between's kind of gray area. I didn't want to read the books on purpose because I, I like to discover, like, you know, opening up a present. Every single episode, you get something new and exciting, and I think I'm gonna read the books now that <laughs> I know what the first season was. Aren't you gonna get that? Actually, I was told not to read the books. I think primarily because our family is so different than the family in the books, so they said don't read the books. I like that they sort of have stories of their own. And the books, it's really all about the girls. I mean, the parents are sort of peripheral characters. You know, occasionally they might be dating somebody new or one of the girls is keeping a secret from them. But now they have their own lives, and I like seeing how they develop. Because of the events that are impacting these girls' lives, it'd be hard to not see their families. It'd be hard not to know what are their parents thinking when these things are going on. You have to include family dynamics that are just aren't there in the books. My character's biggest role is to support the role of Emily. That's why I'm there. That's why my character exists, so that we can see the journey that Emily has to take. And I like how they're finding ways to make the adult storylines cross into what the kids are going through. Do you want these? I wore them once. They gave me a nosebleed. I think they're a little too dressy for a dental office. Fashion to me is like, you know, the most important thing. I live and breathe and eat it and it's everything to me. Mandy's got an amazing sense of style. She has such an eye for everybody's character, but she loves our input. And so there is a touch of us in our, our clothes and our accessories. And she's working with a huge cast and everyone always looks great. She just has like that fashion mind and she definitely distinguished each of the girls. Coming into a job, you always want to create worlds. At least that's what I do the background, where they came from. So when I think of Aria, she's the kind of girl that goes in her closet. I think she does a lot of upcycling, which is like, oh, I wore this last year. I'm so not into it, but you know what? If I switch it up, cool new outfit. Aria is very quirky and different and, you know, willing to take risks with her fashion. And it's really funny because Mandy basically describes Aria as a miniature her because Aria dresses just like Mandy. Mandy will like run into set and be like, you need earrings. And she'll take off her earrings and give them to me or like a ring or she'll go shopping sometimes, but I leave the shopping up to Hannah. Hannah is the girl that looks through the magazines and makes sure she gets exactly what's in, steps it up, puts her little, you know, little twist on it. Not too much. She doesn't go too far out of what's in. I have teenage daughters, and most days I look at Hannah and I think, you are not going to school wearing that skirt. <laughs> that is not appropriate for school. Then you have Spencer. Now Spencer, according to the books, is very preppy, very straight laced but again, that's just, it's boring. So she would wear like vintage Ralph Lauren or she wears a lot of Marc Jacobs too, but she belts it in a certain way. She wears her colors in a certain way. Sometimes she'll bring in something and I'm like, what is that? And then she'll put it on me and she'll pin it and she'll switch it and she'll add something to it and it looks incredible. And then you have Emily. Emily has grown a lot because, you know, she has identity crisis, is that she needed to come out of the closet. She didn't know how to, she's an athlete, and she has to get her approval from her mother. So now that she's come out, she's found herself, she gets to be a little more edgy, a little more real. It's spectacular. It's great. So many of the times when I go in for fittings, I'm just like, wow, like, how do you do this? And it makes our job so much easier because we really feel like our characters, you know? The viewers get really excited because they can go get this stuff. Like, you know, one of Arya's earrings. Like, everyone lost their mind over this feather earring. And, you know, girls can look it up. It's $65. You know, they can save up their money. They can go get it and feel like Arya. Hannah's bag, you can go get it at Urban Outfitters. It looks really, like, high-end, but it's not. And Spencer, you can go to anthropology and find her stuff. So obtainable fashion is really smart and they really push that. And it's kind of cool now, even when I'm out shopping with one of the girls, we'll pick something out and I'll be like, this is so what your character would wear. So, what are you gonna wear? The bell jar or let's get this party started.
<laughs> I have heard lots and lots of crazy theories about who A is. We're all kind of searching for who it is. We're just with the audience. We don't know what, really what's going on because they don't tell us. Everybody has their own theories, which is why this show is so it's so juicy. I've kind of heard every single character think something, and then Allison's not really dead, and then is she a twin? I've heard Jenna, I've heard my mom, which is kind of the most like out there one, but I could definitely see how that can come into play. That was a pretty crazy theory, to think that I might have been A. And I think there was a little bit of that joke backstage or when you know we're not shooting, like, oh, who's, who's gonna be A? Somebody sitting here, I bet. My theory is that it's Ezra, which he hates, because he never wants to be thought of as the bad guy. <laughs> But it's my favorite. And then he tells me that I'm A, and then there you go. <laughs> Every week when we get the scripts and we sit at the table read, we're all aghast, like, <gasps> like all the time. And in fact, for the finale, everybody was on the edge of their seat reading in this room. It was like we were all watching a movie together. I always think it would be really fun if one of the four girls was A because you know, they put so much trust in each other and you never know. Ari could be right next to me sending a text message and act like she she's so surprised. So I don't think that would ever happen, but like in my little world, that would be awesome because the audience would be shocked. I have a feeling A is my assistant, Erica. <laughs> I think she's behind all of this because she's always up to something. She's always up to no good, I'll tell you that much. I'm not sure if the A in the show is the same A of my books. So there were two A's in my books, uh, one at the end of book four and one at the end of book eight. And now that they're going to be four more books in the series. It's going to be a new A at the end of book 12. I wonder if it's one person or if it's two people or if it's like a ghost. Is it, a, is it supernatural? It's exhausting trying to keep up with it. So I'm just like, y'all do your thing. I'm going to read the scripts and I'll find out when it happens. I'm OK with not knowing who A is for a little bit longer. We'll see, maybe next season. I mean, listen, the one thing I've learned about Pretty Little Liars is anything can happen. So I'm not going to make any predictions or promises. I'm just gonna have to say, you're just gonna have to wait and see. Well, I'm leaving in 10. And if A is watching you, I'll be watching her. Sarah and I are Twitter friends. We tweet each other a lot. Uh, she often tweets me when she watches the episodes and she recognizes things that are from the books and then she'll tw tweet me on things that are, are new to her, which she loves, I think, to be surprised every now and then. What I loved is that all of the characters are very similar, a lot of the plots are very similar, but they've infused it with all these fun new mysteries and fun new characters, and I'm really happy with everything that they've done with it. I think they have this embarrassment of riches, if you will. I mean, there, there's just endless possibilities as to where they could take all of these characters. Sarah created the template of the show, which is, you know, a little soap, a little mystery, and what we call a lot of, like, deliciousness, sort of the juiciness of Pretty Little Liars. And it's what Sarah gave to the books. We've tried to do the show, and I think we succeeded in that way. It's been a wonderful experience working on this show for a multitude of reasons. It's a very happy set. And I think the cast is a joy to work with. I've had a really great time. It's been a lot of hard work and a lot of long hours. And we've got to do a lot of amazing things. This shooting of season one for Pretty Little Liars has been an ultimate dream. I've made some great friends on this show. I really care about my castmates. And it shows in the work with everybody, I feel. It's a blast. And I feel so lucky and I really like I'm thankful every single day. We're around each other all the time, so we've gotten to know each other and each other's families, and I couldn't ask for better girls to work with. Troy and Shay and Lucy are like the best thing that has ever happened to me on a set. They're so amazing and nice. It's been such a dream come true, and I'm so happy to get to work with such an amazing cast and crew, and I'm living my dream right now, so it's awesome that everybody enjoys it, and I love coming to work. <laughs>